I've got six essential natty wines to help you get started on your natural wine journey. Right, let's see what we got. All of these can be found at the Real Wine Fair on the 28th of April in London. So you can go up to the growers, ask them all the questions, ask them for the story. Why does it taste like that? So this wine has been on the Geordie Wine Guide before. It's Martin and Anna Andorfer. It's a Gruner Veltliner from Kamptal in Austria. It's up in the north of Austria near Vienna. This is an absolute steal at under 20 quid. And it's a great wine to get you into natural wine because it's unfined, unfiltered, but it's really easy going and it's very easy to love. The flavors are just very precise and very clean. It smells a lot like stone fruit, like peaches and nectarines and stuff. And there's a lot of wines out there you just cannot be asked to drink a bottle of, but this has got pure drinkability. I thought I'd go for this fun red next. This is a Trousseau. You know how much I love Jura? This is a Jura grape variety, but made in California in an urban winery. It's a grape variety that produces quite light wines, but quite intense flavors. I tell you what, this wine has a really lovely rhubarb smell. You know how fashionable rhubarb's getting at the moment. This is another wine with supreme drinkability. When you think of Californian wine, this is not what springs to mind. It's Bloody Trousseau from California. If you follow me channel, you'll know that I drink a shitload of Chenin Blanc, right? This is one of the top growers in the Loire. He's called Thierry Germain. He's been making wine in Samoa since I was a bairn in the early 90s. You've got different types of Chenin in the Loire. You've got Anjou, which has a lot of schist soils. But in Samoa, it's more about the clay limestone. And in this particular vineyard, I think there's a bit of silex, so you know, like flint. Straight away, this wine's got a lot of quince and a lot of pear. It smells rocky in the glass. Amazingly concentrated palate as well. It's not cheap. It's definitely over 30 quid, but it's well worth it. Vendredi Tres. So the title's French, but it's an Italian wine from Sicily. Not just any Sicilian wine, this is Etna. This is where all the great wines of Sicily are made, on the volcanic slopes of Mount Etna. I'm a bit confused. I don't know why they didn't call it Venedi Tredici. They called it Vendredi Tres. So this is a field blend, which means all of the grapes from the vineyard are randomly planted and then just put them all together. The main grape variety in Etna is Norello Mascalesi. So this has got a bit of funk on the nose, actually. This smells a little bit polished, you know, like a, t a touch of nail polish. It's got a very dense minerally taste, but also freshness as well. This wine's crying out for pizza. Staying in Italy, I've got this Langa Nebbiolo. So this is the north of Italy now. We've been to Sicily, now we're going up to the north. Nebbiolo is probably Italy's most celebrated grape variety. And this is where the Barolo is made. But the difference between this Langa Nebbiolo and the Barolo is that Barolo has much more strict requirements in terms of the vineyard and the processing and the aging as well. So a lot more barrel aging and a lot bigger wines than this. It's made in a much lighter style, much more approachable. A lot of Barolos, you can't really approach them for 20 years. They're so tannic. If you have a blind taste in Nebbiolo, the first clue is always the color. Some of them can be very brick red colored, quite light in color, but really powerful wines. And the tannins don't just go on your tongue or around your mouth. They go right up into the front of your mouth up here. Classic tar and roses and all that stuff. It's like a bunch of flowers and a punnet of strawberries. Really classy wine, very together. This wine really punches above its weight. It's under 25 quid, but it really bangs. And finally, I've got a wine from Bordeaux. It's made by this lady called Lucy and it's called Oops. Merlot, sometimes it's got that purple meniscus around the glass. Can you see all that purple color? Made in a totally different style to all your classic Bordeaux. This is ready to go now. Inky, juicy fruit but still has a lot of that Merlot character. So it's got that plummy dark berries. It's got these aromas that are inherent in the grape variety called pyrazines. So that's where you get some of that rocky pepperiness. And if you haven't watched the film Sideways from 2004, because it's about this guy who hates Merlot, you need to watch it. I am not drinking any fucking Merlot. So there you have it. There's a few natty wines to get stuck into, but don't get hung up on the word natural. It's all about how it was farmed, whether it's got a shitload of additives in it, and whether it was made on a small scale by real people with real stories. So the next time you're walking down that supermarket aisle and you're just about to buy some heavily discounted piss, just ask yourself, who made it? Where's it from? How many bottles did they make? Why is it so cheap? Is the farming any good? All right, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on the Jory Wine Guide.